I'm upset. I really wanted to start my day in one of these truck stop massage chairs, but they're not plugged in. I saw them last night when I walked in here and I thought it'd be a cool way to start today, but I guess not. I do have a bunch of coins that I brought in anticipating using the machine, and they have a bunch of claw machines, so I'm gonna try one of those out, see if I can win something. Um, it just ate all of my quarters. So I guess we're not playing that either. Wonderful start to the day. I meant when I shave. So for those of you that are new here, today's day 12 of the cross country road trip out of my van. I live in that van right there. And last night we slept in this Denny's slash Flying J parking lot. And I'm posting a video every single day right up until I get home before Christmas of what it's like to live out of my van. And today we're gonna be driving just about an hour north from where we currently are to a little reservoir that has some dispersed campgrounds and also some fishing. And although I won't be doing a catch and cook, um, I'm hoping I can catch some fish. I'm hoping that removing the pressure of making it an actual catch and cook will make it a little bit easier to catch some fish. Or at least that's my thought. And if you're wondering why I just poured a bunch of stuff out of a Ziploc bag into a pan, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, yesterday I cooked a massive breakfast on a mountain and these are the leftovers. So got a couple eggs, some sausage, some potatoes, a little piece of bacon, and that's pretty much it. And that's where we're having breakfast. And this actually brings up a good point. Uh, one of the things that sucks about living in my van specifically is I didn't put a microwave anywhere. So this is pretty much the only option I have for reheating food, which gets kind of annoying sometimes because a microwave would definitely be easier. And I've been thinking about installing one right here. So taking out this little shelf that holds some candles and some random stuff and just putting a microwave right here, like bolting it into this cabinet and having it sit right here. So I'd like open up the door right here and it would just sit right there, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Maybe once I get home for Christmas, I'll take the time to do that. But for now, it's just pan reheating and oven reheating. Also, last night is the first night that I've slept with my heater on for the entire night. So I'm interested to go out front and see how much diesel it actually used up. So I have a pretty good gauge of how long that uh, diesel tank will last me for heating up the back of the van. Breakfast was delicious yet again. Oh, wow. He's just about, I'd say a little bit less than half because it kind of is sloping back there. So a little bit less than half a tank. I'm actually kind of surprised. And that's with just about 10 to 11 hours of continuous use. So not too bad in my opinion, because typically I only run it for maybe three hours, four hours a day. So I think as long as it's not um, extreme cold temperatures, like anything below five degrees Fahrenheit, I think I'd be good for just about a week without having to refill that. So that's nice. All right, I think it's time we check out of our lovely campsite for the night and hit the road. And uh, hopefully yesterday's video gets uploaded. It's been uploading since last night at 11.30 and it's only 89% done and still has an hour and 30 minutes left. So hopefully we can get that done before we get to our campsite. It always feels so weird driving through small town USA. Makes me wonder what these spots would have looked like in their heyday. Puckett's Food. That's a zesty looking truck. I like it. All right, we got ourselves a nice pizza for dinner tonight. Keeping it simple. Now let's hope that video uploaded and then uh, we're hitting the road to the campsite. Woo! There we go. Video's uploaded, thank God. Cause I don't know if I'm gonna have service at this campsite tonight. And pretty much the only time I can buy frozen food is when I'm using it same day because if you look at my freezer, I don't wanna take this cover off cause it's hard to get back on, but it's completely frozen over. Um, I just need to defrost it. I haven't done it yet, but I can't really use it anymore. And then, and even if I did have it defrosted, it wouldn't be big enough for that pizza, so it doesn't even matter. All right, and 
this is it. This is where our campsite's gonna be for the night. We're really in the middle of nowhere here. Back in Oklahoma. But it should be right up on this little uh, spring creek up over this hill. So there it is. Now we just gotta find ourselves a uh, nice campsite for the night. Look at that. That's a nice campsite. This is gonna be our home for the night four, day 12. So this is it, kind of right on the water here of Spring Lake, Oklahoma. So we've got a pretty nice spot, kind of right there. And then there's a little fire pit. I didn't get any firewood, I should have, but it's pretty windy out, so I probably shouldn't light a fire anyways, but picnic table and then a nice little beach. This would be a cool spot to come, I guess, in the uh, summertime. And again, Crazy windy out. It's like my own tropical beach in Oklahoma. Pretty cool spot. You don't find spots like this when driving through uh, the Plain States very often. So this is nice. Definitely gonna try some fishing later. We won't be doing any catch and cook. We're just gonna be fishing for some smallmouth and largemouth bass just off the uh, shore here. But I really do like this spot. And as a bonus, I have service, which is nice. I don't have AT&T but I do have a Verizon service, which is why it's good to have that redundancy because when I don't have AT&T, typically I have Verizon, and when I don't have Verizon, typically I have AT&T service. So I'm really glad that I ended up getting that AT&T router as well as my Verizon router. Oh. It's a chilly one out today too. Also another unpretty thing <laughs> about parking in spots like this is when duty calls, Usually you gotta dig a hole. And uh, when I pulled up here, I took that shovel over there into the woods, dug a hole and uh, did my business. So yeah, van life isn't all rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes it's holes and poop. So it looks like the uh, wind is kind of blowing across the lake, like this way kind of. So. Um, I want to be able to keep my door open, but with having the wind constantly blowing in here, the trees kind of block it somewhat, but I'm going to angle my van kind of more, more out this way so that the wind isn't blowing through the door and so that I can keep the door open without having uh, that cold air blowing in here constantly. There we go. That should be a little bit better. So now the wind is kind of coming directly at the back of the van, so I can keep this door open and have a little bit better experience. We'll take this out a little bit later too, see if we can catch something with it. Wait till the sun sets a little bit and the fish start feeding. Um, I don't even know if this time of year is good for fishing. I didn't really do any research, but at least there's no pressure on it this time to where I've got to catch something so that I can eat. I can just go out there, relax a little bit, cast a few, and if I catch something, I catch something. <sighs> Definitely gets lonely out here. I will say that if you're not very comfortable with yourself and comfortable being on your own, I truly don't think living in a van is uh, something you should try, especially long term, because I feel like if you're the wrong type of person, this extreme kind of being alone all the time could really wreak havoc on, on your mental state, so yeah. But if you're traveling with someone else, it's a completely different story. It's 10 times more fun. When my girlfriend and my brother are out here, it's a blast. Sit around a campfire, drink, hang out, have someone to talk to. And I'm pretty comfortable with myself and being alone, so it's not really that big of an issue for me. I kind of enjoy it a lot of the time. It lets me focus on these videos and uh, kind of just enjoying my own presence, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I bet you the sunset tonight is going to be spectacular. It's going to set like right across the lake from my van. That'll be nice for fishing. So I was just walking around, checking out the campsite, and someone left a message in the sand. Look at this. Isn't that so weird? It's crazy. Anyways, I think I'm just going to hang out here, fart around for an hour or two, and then get into some fishing. And I found these weird kind of balls 
all over the place on the ground. I'm not sure what they are. Good for throwing though. bit of uh, scoping out down the shoreline earlier because if you guys will look out there is uh, pretty much nothing going on in the lake so there's no fallen trees there's no grass there's nothing for fish to hide in or any honey hole spots that I can go check out but when I was walking down up over there kind of checking out the lake earlier there was this uh, there's this little outcropping up there that has a little bit calmer water it looked like there might be some grass in there so I'm gonna walk up there because I think that might be my best chance for catching any kind of bass on this spinner bait we have. And then if I can't catch anything on this, I'll switch out to the only other bait that I have because I didn't pick up anything else and I only really have two things to use. And hopefully we can catch ourselves fish today. It's a really small pond kind of in the middle of nowhere so there's not much information on it but I did look it up before I came out here and it said there should be uh, some channel catfish, some large and some smallmouth bass. So we'll walk over there and see if there are. And spinner baits are by far my favorite type of lure to use just because when you get a hook on a spinner bait, it feels so much better than anything else. And it's typically what I used when I was a kid, fishing for bass in uh, small ponds near my house. Might be a little tougher today too because the water is so murky from the uh, wind. I guess we'll see. There's a bunch of cows up there too, if you guys can see them. A bunch of cows up on that ridge grazing I guess there's a farm over here somewhere so I think we're gonna start out right here cast a couple see if we can get any bites I'm gonna try to reel it in a little bit slower because I was watching videos on uh, catching bass in the winter and apparently they slow down in the winter so Trying to reel in nice and slow, see if we can catch one. But there's just no, there's just no shrubbery or trees or anything over here. And I have no idea how deep this water is. So over here, I feel like I have a little bit better odds because the water is a little bit clearer. So I'm not only going for field bites, I'm going for sight bites with those little spinners reflecting in that sunset over there. Oh, I saw a fish jump over there. Oh, come on. Oh, I gotta get my rod in over there. Oh. It jumped out right there, kind of in this little channel. So I'm gonna fish off this point right here. I feel like I should buy a little dinghy so I can like go float out in water like this when I get to places like this. At least we've got some confirmation that there is fish in here. Oh, this is so much more enjoyable without that wind. Oh, we had a bite. That was our first bite. Oh, I didn't set the hook though. All right, all right, all right. Oh, even that bite was just so exciting. All right, we're quickly running out of sunlight here, so I think I'm going to switch out this lure and fish with that little minnow for the last 15 to 20 minutes of sunlight we have. All right, let's go switch this out and then uh, try that minnow for 15, 20 minutes before the sun fully goes down and then we'll call it a night. Ow, oh, son of a... All right, the sun is uh, really setting here, so I think that's all she wrote today. Another day of fishing, no dice. It was still nice out. It's nice that the uh, wind died down um, at the end there. Made it just a little bit nicer, but yeah, sadly no fish. That's such a bummer, but I guess my girlfriend said it best. That's why they call it fishing and not catching. We'll get them one of these days. Pretty nice sunset going on out here too. 
I think I'm gonna get that pizza started here pretty soon. It's so much nicer out here now that that uh, wind isn't blowing so strong anymore. The lake has kind of calmed down. It doesn't feel as cold out. It's really nice. I'm so glad I got a pizza tonight because I do not feel like cooking anything. And I promise you guys, one of these days, we're gonna go out and we're gonna catch a fish. I don't care how long it takes, it's gonna happen. I, I fished for bass all the time when I was a kid. I guess it's just the time of year that they're not biting too much. Um, I don't really know too much about fishing, but anyways. All right, there we go. Oven is on. 15 minutes for that to preheat. And then we'll pop that pizza in. Right, let's get this bad boy in there. Barely fits in there. I think while I wait for that to cook, I'm gonna hop on and just play a little bit of Xbox to uh, round out the night. But first, it's getting to spooky hours, so we'll say goodbye to the sunset. Stay hunkered down for the night. So typically when I play an Xbox in here, I'll use my AT&T hotspot, but as I said earlier, it doesn't have any connection, so um, I'm gonna connect to my phone's hotspot and uh, that should be good enough to play. Oh, oh, game needs an update. I guess maybe we won't play Xbox. I definitely don't have good enough connection to finish that update. All right, the update just started and uh, it is 14 gigabytes and I'm getting 13 megabytes per second. So that's definitely not gonna finish tonight. So I think I'm just gonna pop on a movie while we uh, wait for this pizza. All right, I think she's done. Oh, beautiful. There we go. That's dinner for the night. I'm just gonna put a Netflix movie on tonight. Watch that on my Roku. It's because uh, if you guys didn't know, I do have a uh, HDMI splitter back here. So I've got my laptop. So when I wanna use this as a second monitor for my laptop, I can. Or actually, that's my Xbox. This is to my Roku right here. And then this one right here is for my laptop. So, so if I just press this button right here, it switches the HDMI to Xbox, laptop, Roku. And it just makes it really easy because this thing only has one HDMI, so it's nice. So I think I'm gonna set up my table in bed to eat pizza with a movie. Ooh, and I'm actually also gonna make some root beer. My little soda cabinet. I like my seltzer extra seltzery. Look at that, that is crazy bubbly, holy crap. It looks so cool when you pour it in too. It's nice that my water tank gets naturally chilled too by the uh, cold weather, because now all my drinks are super cold. So I'm not too uh, in touch with what's good on Netflix anymore, but I'm sure there's gotta be something good that we can put on. Or the bullet train is good, so I guess we'll just put that on for tonight. There we go. Now I'm probably just going to sit here, hang out, and uh, eat some pizza, watch this movie, and then uh, edit this video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching this nonstop vlog every day, van life, YouTube extravaganza. If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and tune in for tomorrow's video, and I will catch you guys in the morning.